Hi, just a quick follow-up video on the Fluke uh, PM3370B scope. Uh, I, it has not failed. Um, I've had this like run in for like a day and a bit uh, continuously, um, except when I go home, I don't want to leave it overnight just in case. And um, this thing just does not fail. I've just uh, switched it off now or a few minutes ago and ooh, uh, that's that's hot. I can barely keep my hand on there. So I've had it running with the lid on, um, of course, to contain the heat inside. So we're only relying um, on the fan, which is uh, all the way up here, um, to sort of like, you know, circulate and stuff. So, you know, it gets hotter inside. So it's effectively like heating up all the components to try and make it fail. But unfortunately, it hasn't failed. Now, I want to take out the board and actually have a look at what's solder joint in one of the components, because here's a comment from the previous video from John. Bonham, thank you very much, who uh, noticed in one of my lingering uh, shots, which I'll show here, that it looks like, uh, I believe it's the uh, PTC in there, is it, um, on the input um, side over here, that was, uh, it looked like the solder joint on that was dry as a dead dingo's donger. And somebody emailed me about another uh, surface mount uh, capacitor on the bottom that they think they noticed a, uh, like the solder was missing, or a dodgy joint, or something like that. Um, and I, well, I'm going to take it out and visualize uh, check and show you um, because he thought like uh, the PTC when I actually wobbled it when I moved it or something it moved too far or something like that anyway um, it could be but if the DC we measured the DC rail and the DC rail was fine so if the uh, if there was a crack in the solder joint in there it was causing that then you wouldn't still get your DC rail so anyway you never know uh, with intermittent uh, things but Anyway, I get these comments uh, quite a lot, especially in uh, these repair videos, because people are looking, actively looking at my videos in high resolution. Of course, sometimes I do them in 4K resolution, but this one was uh, 1070, and they go, aha, I can see that solder joint, um, and they give me the timestamp and everything. Fantastic. Thank you. Please keep doing that. Um, but I find that in almost every case... Uh, that uh, what you're seeing is a quirk of the lighting. And it's really hard to actually get good lighting on solder joints. When you're inspecting, this is why you have to really inspect them up close under a good optical magnification and at different angles and with different lighting um, or, opti you know, lighting that you've set up optimized for the uh, task. It's very difficult. So we'll take the board out and we'll just recheck that joint uh, to see if it is actually dodgy or whether or not it's just the light. So I don't know. Let's go. Okay, there's the part there. And the first thing to notice, you know how I mentioned PTC before? Um, this is actually NTC or negative temperature coefficient. PTC is positive temperature coefficient. I just assumed it was a PTC. I couldn't see the writing on it um, from the top because it's in series, of course, with the diode bridge. So here's your 240 volt mains input here. Here's your X class uh, capacitor across the input. And then you've got a uh, what I thought was a PTC um, in series with your diode diode bridge rectifier here, which full wave bridge rectifies your AC mains, and that's why you've got to have a 400 volt Nippon Chemicon um, caps here. So what a PTC does, positive temperature coefficient, if the temperature of this part increases, which it will do if you pass more current through it, um, it will heat up, and when it heats up, a PTC will actually increase in value. So what that does, if, you know, there's some short in your circuit somewhere, there's some fault that's drawing excess current, then this will actually, a PTC will heat up and it will limit the current flow. So it's an overcurrent protection device. Um, but why they've got an NTC in here in series with the bridge rectifier, what that's doing is it operates negative. So if the temperature of this increases, the resistance goes down. So, and of course the temperature of this will increase because there's the more current flows, the Resistance goes down? Well, why would you do that? That just sounds like it's dumb, right? Well, no, it's not. What that's used for in this particular case, if you see an NTC in series with something like this, you know that's used for inrush current limiting. The surge, when you first turn it on, these capacitors, of course, are going to act as a, basically a short circuit. Um, so you want to limit the inrush current to charge these capacitors up. And the way that you do that is with an NTC not a PTC. So there you go. Um, I had nothing to do with this, but I just, <laughs> we're talking about this part, so there you have it. So apparently, in the previous video, when I gave this a wiggle, wiggle, y wiggle, yeah, um, it moved, they said it moved too far, but um, no, that's just the nature 
of those um, thin leads and the way it's mounted um, with, uh, you know, off the board with only two of them like that. So I don't see anything wrong there. Okay, so I've got my times 10 macro lens. Just this is a similar shot to how I had it set up before. My studio lights are here. And, well, it's hard for me to see on the camcorder screen. So I may have to, um, you know, annotate this in the um, edit. And that, that does look dry as a den dingo's donger, doesn't it? You can see, oh, geez, it's hard to get focus, you bastard. If I wiggle the top, I'm wiggling the top now, but I'm not seeing the bottom wiggle. Now, I got my studio lights in the same position that I had them before. Okay, so I'm putting my studio lights sort of like behind or to the right hand side of the uh, thing now. I can't, once again, I can't see this on the camcorder screen. Grrr. Okay, how does that look? Does that look any different now? Hmm. Now, the ultimate optical tool I have here in the lab is my Mantis uh, Elite Microscope. And I've mentioned this before, that the internal camera in this thing sucks ass. It's just, oh, it's hopeless. I hate it. Um, it's really an optical visual uh, inspection uh, bit of kit. And so I've got my camcorder up into the hood of the, um, you know, the actual viewing hood of this thing. So it's, it's not the best, but there it is, looking from the top. And as you can see, it actually looks uh, pretty schmick. And there's another view of it there. And you can see that there is like a really sharp angle on like the right hand side here. It was left uh, hand side before when we were viewing it from the other direction. Um, and so, yeah, but the one, but on the left of the joint there, it is actually very smooth. So it's really hard to keep and get this in focus on camera. But uh, yeah, it is actually completely smooth on one side and it doesn't move when I wiggle it on the top. All right, so how does it look under the Tagano microscope? Uh, the Tagano is just not as good as you can't beat the optical Mantis microscope. But I, I actually got the camera working in the Mantis, but it's just, it's garbage. It is so underexposed. It just looks black as the Ace of Spades. It's just absolutely terrible. Anyway, um, here's the joint under the Tagano. So there it is. That's the one we're interested in. And once again, if I wiggle the bottom, I am wiggling that, okay? There is nothing transferring through to that other side, okay? But, so if I turn that light, and that's the internal light. So now, if I get another external light, I'll turn this down a bit, and I take it around, take it around, like there, there is a sharp contrast. And unfortunately, to tilt it and get the same zoom, I'm going to have to lift my um, Tagano up. That might do it. There you go, because it's all a function of distance. It's tricky because I've got my ATEM on there. Uh, hang on. Uh, 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 uh. You're better off having it higher up and then bringing the object up to it than not. Okay, so now my Tagano's high. All right, there we go. Yeah, see, it's overexposed there, but hopefully you can see, but that is shiny. I can actually underexpose that. There you go. You can underexpose that. There you go. Now you can actually see. Let me zoom in a bit more. Oh, sorry, I've got to handhold this just at, like I'm at maximum zoom. It's 30 centimeters working distance. Now you can see down in there, you can see why, you know, like under certain lights, this would, this would show up really bad. Um, but as I said, there is no, like if I wiggle that, it's doing absolutely nothing. So that's at that angle. It's all about the angles. There you go, look. On that side of it, the joint actually looks, oh, I'll try and keep it a bit steadier. I'm trying to hold it in free air here. See, on that side, it actually looks pretty good. So yeah, I like, there's, there's nothing inherently wrong with that joint. I don't think. But of course, I will, <laughs> just to be sure, I will actually reflow um, that joint. But yeah, you can see how hopefully that gives you an idea. Uh, look, and it looks perfect from the top. If you're looking around 
with your digital you know microscope if you've got a kick-ass one like this uh Tegano one then like you would think that would be you know great like you might give it a little bit of an angle but i can see this incredibly clearly and detailed under the mantis microscope here and um yeah i'm sorry i can't it doesn't show up on camera it just looks gore you have to look through these things in real life to actually like it just it's so bright and clear and crisp and and i can tilt my head around and i can like it's a 3d microscope so i can like move my head and look at the angles and stuff like that and it looks okay it does actually look okay but yeah that is actually believe it or not that is i i believe that's a that's a good joint like you would you would certainly certainly i'd say resolder that as a matter of course so let's do that just to keep everyone happy but anyway i hope you found that as an interesting um example of how light can potentially fool you into th oh that's definitely a dry joint when it's actually in most in almost every case every repair almost every repair video actually i get somebody email me because uh, they've watched it on their high def telly and they go oh that joint's definitely dry um and it, it's not it's just a trick of shadows and lights and stuff like that in this particular case yeah it doesn't look terrific at certain angles and um but certainly when i wiggle it so it's got nothing to do with the wiggle 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 yeah um and so i will just uh clean that and resolder it uh, we'll just heat that up a bit there and no i'll actually wick i'm just putting that on so i then i can wick it off let's just wick some of that away shall we and it's still not wiggle 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 year in and we will resolder that nice and fresh there you go that's a freshie. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, it's that lead-free rubbish. But anyway, thanks for those who uh, pointed it out. I just wanted to show you that it most likely wasn't that. Um, so, yeah, there's a couple of other theories and stuff. But, um, yeah, I, if it ain't busted, um, it's hard to fix it. And by putting the case on, it is actually getting very warm inside this thing. So, yeah, like I can put it inside... Uh, like if you don't have a thermal chamber if you just want stuff to heat up you can stick it inside say a styrofoam uh, Container or something I've uh, you see me score those from the dumpster the big styrofoam uh, Containers that's why I have those for you can stick them in there. They do a pretty good job once you heat it You know put a little port in the side for the cable power it up and it'll heat up um, Inside because it's an insulator the heat can't radiate um, out so yeah, of course, you put a temperature probe in there to make sure you're not going to fry the thing. But, um, yeah, you could stress uh, products that way or something. But, yeah, I don't know. At, at this stage, I'm just running it for, like, a few days to see how it goes and stuff. But I, I just cannot fail it. It's just not failing. <laughs> so, anyway, hope you found that interesting. Catch you next time.